Good morning. So glad you could join us. This is day 30 of the big government shutdown, and the president has now put a new plan on the table that he says can break the impasse. Money for a wall and more, and in return, protect the dreamers and others and open government. The president pitched his plan in a national broadcast yesterday. And here to talk about that broadcast, the plan and a bill to grant TPS to Venezuelans is Congressman Mario Diaz Ballard of Miami. He has served in Congress since 2002, re elected last November in District 25, which runs from West Miami Day, the suburbs across the Everglades, almost to Naples. Congressman, good, good morning. Good morning. Great pleasure. You good know to why see you it's all. so great to have you here this morning is because in South Florida, you are the lone remaining Republican congressman. You have a great relationship with the president. You are so well versed on the immigration issue because you've been at the forefront on so many bills and legislation. So start us off with what you think of this government's proposal to build the wall, a wall, a different steel see-through wall, uh, money for a lot of other border security, mm -hmm. and in return, temporary protections for the dreamers and for the people who get temporary protected yeah. status from Central America that you have been working to protect for so long. I have. First, thanks for the opportunity. Um, look, the way to get out of the shutdown is very simple. Everybody understands it. When you speak to members, not leadership in the House, Republicans and Democrats, they will tell you the way to get out of here is give the president what he wants on border security in exchange for something that we all want. And what, what is that? That everybody else wants. The issue of... of, of, of Protect, uh, of providing uh, permanency legality to the dreamers. Um, I would add, obviously, and the president threw it on the table, which is good, those who are here under temporary protective uh, status, that we all know who they are. There's about 400,000 of them. Um, they've been here for some of them for decades. Um, that is a reasonable way to go. But now, the, you, you but the permanency, the the permanency yeah. isn't in here. Correct. It's yeah. temporary. Correct. Right. That's the amendment three, that I proposed. Three years. Uh, Correct. Excuse me. Correct. What, President said Correct. a three year reprieve. I mean, that's Correct. hardly permanent and does not give them a path to citizenship. But, Michael, here's the interesting thing. So, I brought to the, to, uh, the Rules Committee two weeks ago because th this is the way to move out of here to have uh, to end the shutdown is everybody has to win a little bit and everybody sure. has to give a little bit. That's how life is and that's how the legislative process is. I brought an amendment four amendments that said, in essence, very simple, uh, very similar, except a little bit more generous. It, it was a uh, permanency uh, to all the dreamers with citizenship plus TPS mm -hmm. in exchange for the $5.7 billion. And that was thrown out, rejected on a party line vote in the Rules Committee. Now, I know that members of the Rules Committee, Democrats, wanted to support it, but this is coming from Nancy Pelosi. So, whether it's $5.7 billion, $7 billion, $4 billion for border security, by the way, which is reasonable, for uh, permanent status, which is what I want, temporary status, is it 2 million people, is it 1.8, is it 5 million? That's how you, you have to start these negotiations. Right. The president put now for the second time something which I think is positive on the table. But here's the interesting thing. We could argue forever about what are the good parts or what are the bad parts. But before he even did that, before anybody even saw it, yeah. the Democratic leadership said, we it's reject a it. Yeah, it's a and that, that is, we're never going to be able to not only get out of the shutdown, deal with the important issues, if before you even see a proposal, you reject it because you don't like the messenger. Well, look, can, can, I just, can I just say what I've read, and for the record, I have not spoken to Nancy Pelosi, right. but from my impression from what I read is, the non-starter means she and the Democrats would like to see the government open before this kind of deal is made. In other words, don't hold government workers and the rest mm -hmm. of the country hostage over this particular uh, tr uh, this particular issue and negotiations and immigration and the wall open the government first. That that was kind of my take on why this was a non-starter. Is is that even possible to do? Glenna, there's a there's a million. If you want to be a no, you can come up with a different a million reasons why you don't want to support. But is there merit to that argument? I mean, the, the government me the is shut is, down. To me, the merit is let's let's sit down. Let's figure out a way forward to reopen the government. And in my view, let's also take care of the dreamers of TPS and other issues. And let's pass the appropriations bills that have been ready to go for, for, for months. And so this concept about, well, you have to do this first before you do that. Hey, you know how you solve that? You sit in a room, you roll up your sleeves, you say, what do you really need? And, and we know what the president needs. What does Nancy really want and need? 
put that on the yeah. table and let's reach yeah. a resolution. But Congressman, it isn't the real problem right now is that both Nancy Pelosi and the president have painted themselves into very difficult corners and can't seem to sort of budge or get out of it. And, and the question is, how then who does yeah. move forward yeah. and do this? I was talking to a former member of Congress the other day, and that member of Congress was saying, why doesn't Steny Hoyer and some blue dog Democrats get together and say, here is a plan that we can vote for with our Republican right. colleagues in the House and have Nancy Pelosi say, I don't like it, but doesn't punish Correct. these Democrats, then it would get over to the Senate. How about well, that? I think there's, there's, there, I think it's going to have to be an organic thing, but an organic measure. It's starting. That's happening. There are conversations. I'm involved in conversations with a myriad of different groups because there's mm -hmm. all sorts of different groups in the House. But I get, it, I can talk to all of them. So I, there's going to be legislation that the House will be able to put forward. I think the Senate, even before that, there may be an organic move also to bring something in the Senate. But, but again, all of them have to encompass something real for border security and then something real for, I believe, that the solution should be, in this case, because it's related, um, Dreamers, DACA, and TPS. And so everybody's going to have to be willing to stop saying it's dead on arrival. Can, can we unpack a little bit of the different components to this sure. plan? And the president was talking about $5.7 for this barrier. Which is a, a rounding error when you're talking about border security, by uh, the way. Okay. Well, that, I mean, I think everyone's kind of clear on what that means yeah. now. But, but aside from that, $800 million for urgent humanitarian assistance. What is that? Yeah. Um, there are folks, that's to help folks in the hemisphere. Folks uh, in the hemisphere who are kind of caught in limbo and struggling. Who? Who and struggling where? Well, I what mean, again, you're... I haven't seen the details of exactly where they want to spend okay. that. I will tell you that as a member of the Appropriations Committee, for example, we have funded, at the request of the administration, money to help Venezuelans who are stuck in third countries, mostly in Colombia. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of that. And so that was, I thought, a pretty large number. Uh, for humanitarian assistance. So we have to see exactly, I, I'm not willing to just give a blank check, but I will tell you what, it is a generous offer to help folks um, in this country, to help folks um, uh, and, to, and to solve this. Look, shutdowns happen from time to time. The reason I'm so infuriated on this one is because it's stupid, because there's bipartisan support to do, whether it's the amendments that I proposed that were rejected outright by the Democratic leadership, whether it's something similar to what the president's proposed, there's support for that. We just have to get, and all of this, frankly, you know, the, uh, give her credit, all right? The person who is controlling all of this is Nancy Pelosi. C can I just go back to, I want to follow up, because I kind of, I really want to wrap sure. our heads around this. Yeah. So a part of this is, uh, one, another component of the plan was doing asylum requests for people in the Central American countries who are leaving right. there in those countries. Right. And, and I, I remember something like that was either proposed or already done. And a lot of the criticism that the president has taken over the past couple of years was he's ignoring and pulling out of those countries where a lot of our U.S. resources were fighting drugs and gang warfare and law enforcement. And this sounds like putting that back. But he doesn't say that outright. Well, Do but you it's know? interesting because I, I, when you say pulling back, um, if you look at what we've done for the last couple of years, um, uh, Congress with the administration has been exceedingly generous, for example, uh, f for the, the three countries in, in, in what we call the, the, you know, the triangle, right? Honduras, Salvador, Guatemala. Yeah, Honduras, yeah, and that Guatemala. was, the, yeah, yeah. and the, something that an effort that the vice president led. And so, so there's been a, a lot of effort, and I think rightfully so, to help those countries to deal with a lot of the issues that they have. Because, you know, let's recognize there's a lot of violence. There's drug violence. There's cartels. Gangs, the economy gangs, is terrible. Right. So, yeah. so we have been very generous. Now, yes, absolutely. If you look at what the budget proposal was originally, it's not what we ended up doing. And because Congress ultimately has a great part of the responsibility. So we have not been pulling back. And this, and this administration hasn't been pulling back from this hemisphere. I would argue that they've done, they've been a lot more aggressive in helping, leading in this hemisphere uh, than, frankly, the last two administrations. All right, hold your thoughts. We're going to come back, take a little break. Back with Congressman Mario diaz Balart in just a minute. Welcome back. Live with us in the studio today is Congressman Mario diaz Balart of Miami. Congressman, as we all know, 800,000 federal workers are either furloughed or at work. In any case, yes. nobody is being paid. Tuesday, 
is they have to have a decision by Tuesday to be paid next Friday. Are you hearing, is your office hearing from TSA workers or Coast Guard's men and women? I mean, people are saying, come on, yeah. I'm in, in terrible you know, a crisis here absolutely. financially. And it's, it, absolutely, it is, it is, it is unfair, uh, to me unthinkable, that, that these folks are not getting paid. But there are also a lot of other issues, talking about transportation that, that people don't know about. For example, that I just heard from, from uh, air traffic controllers. Um, you have, for example, we're spending money on, on training for this new system, right, what we call next generation, mm -hmm. which has been in the works for a long time. The, if, if you're not using those systems, if an air traffic controller is not using those new systems, they have to retrain. If they're, I think it's yeah. what, 60 days, 90 days. That clock started before the shutdown in many cases. So the training isn't taking place. But on top of that, we're going to have to probably then spend the money again to retrain folks yeah. that have already well, been trained. A lot of so it's, it's a lot here. of like, you know, yeah. very damaging things that are taking place that are. It's bad that folks aren't getting paid. Well, to me, it's embarrassing. You, but there's also a lot of other really bad things happening yeah. that nobody's picking up on. Like what? Can, can, can like what haven't we picked up on? Because I think well, we've like been, this we've issue, been like, no, 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 I know. Things, yeah. but, but like the issue, for example, you know, there, a lot of them are kind of technical, but they end up not only costing a lot of money, but I think over, overall delaying things that have to be done. This shutdown, if it were to close down, if it were to end tomorrow, it's going to delay things for one to two or three years, things that, that have been working that now yeah. all of a sudden you just lose all that yeah. progress. All right, well you, you and your fellow members of Congress are reconvening on Tuesday. Do you have any confidence that Tuesday, Wednesday, that there is going to be some kind of a breakthrough that uh, a bill can get out of the House, go to the Senate and to the White House? Again, um, I had an amendment, four amendments, logical amendments that have, have always, all parts of it have received strong bipartisan support to reopen the government, to do something very basic, help the Dreamers, the TPS folks, and do some basic border security. Um, and it was rejected on a party line vote. The president proposes something which is, um, by the way, imperfect, but before it was out, Nancy Pelosi rejected it uh, outright. outright. Um, I think it's going to require, unfortunately, the and, and, and let's be perfectly honest, it's going to require the Democrats in the, in the Senate, in the House, to just tell Nancy Pelosi, look, I'm sorry, we are going to now start supporting things. Uh, more likely than not, however, Michael, it may have to start out of the Senate. Uh, and I think you're going to see, in relatively short order, bills starting to come to, come to the floor, imperfect yeah. as it may be, uh, to start trying to get yeah. uh, break this impasse. You know, the, the plan, the president's plan, is a temporary, Correct. he says, reprieve Correct. for the deferred action, the dreamers. Correct. But they already have a reprieve in the courts, so that's kind of moot. Um, the, the temporary protected status is very interesting because it's the president that ended or, or sort of put the clock on temporary protected Correct. status for Haitians and Salvadorans, uh, Nicaraguans, Hondurans. Um, so a three-year reprieve is kind of kicking the can down the road again, where temporary protected status is supposed to be temporary. Right. But the catch there is that temporary is 10 years, 15 years, so that these people don't return to countries where the conditions don't warrant human life. Right. But in 10, 15 years, a human being builds a life somewhere else. So the three-year reprieve, what does that do? Practically speaking, what does that even mean? If you are here on TPS and you're a Haitian or you're a Guatemalan or you're a Honduran or you're a Liberian um, and, and you know that you are going to be subject to deportation within potentially months, that three-year reprieve is hugely important. Now, I would argue this. I want to do more than that three-year reprieve for those on TPS. But also, I want to have a permanent, uh, I want permanency for not only the DACA, the Dreamers. But here's the, the issue. You have to start negotiating. In other words, you know, it, it would, you imagine if, if a legislator would tell a colleague who comes with a proposal and does this and we say no, as opposed to saying, hey, thank you, I would like something more than that, let's, let's talk. The problem that you're having is that the legislative leadership, particularly in the House, uh, led by Nan Speaker Nancy Pelosi, refuses to talk. Is that behind the to, scenes as well as yeah, in there public? Are, because there are in no, public, it's optics. Yeah, right? but there are no, there are no real conversations taking place, which is why I am infuriated. I am outraged. Uh, which I said this, this is a stupid shutdown because all it requires, the differences are minor. 
In other words, you've heard a million times the Democratic leadership say they support border security. Now, fine. What is it that you support? They're saying that $5.7 mm. billion dollars is too much, but I have here a document that shows that Nancy Pelosi supported, just in 2014, uh, $42 billion. So, look, you, for you don't border want security. for border security. So, what is it Comprehensive, that... Comprehensive, uh, well, a big package. Well, what is it, what is it that they different support? Different circumstances. Yeah. I, I agree. Correct. Correct. All right. uh, so, let's just start thing. talking in okay. a real sense. And I will tell you, if those conversations start taking place and you relax, lower the decibels, we can have a deal a good deal for the country, for the dreamers, for border security, for those on TPS within 12 hours. Let me move now to TPS for Venezuelans. On yeah. Friday, you had a news conference at your office in Doral, where, of course, many Venezuelans uh, live, as long in Weston. 350,000 Venezuelans fled the country right. to the U.S. And their circumstances here are chancy. I mean, there many of them are here, as you know, on tourist visas. Mm -hmm. If they overstay them, they could be deported, and some have been sent back. So right. tell us about how you, what you want to do for the Venezuelans who are in this risky position and get TPS for them. Well, first place, look, I think, and that's how you get things done. That's how I've always gotten things done in Congress. It has to be bipartisan, so this is a, an effort led by... Uh, Congressman Darren Soto, Democrat from Central Florida, dear friend of mine, myself. And then we have others. Donna Shalala is mm -hmm. already She joined. was with and, you on yep, Friday. And, and we're going to have others. Uh, because the administration, this administration has been, I think, very good as far as pressuring the dictatorship in Venezuela. And they've actually gotten the world to join those right. efforts in sanctioning. So they recognize the special circumstances that, that are happening in Venezuela, which is why we think. And, and by the way, not only that, we talked about humanitarian aid. The administration, Congress has helped, has also, is also funding humanitarian, humanitarian aid for those Venezuelans who are in third countries. Right. So they recognize the situation. Um, but the fact is that we have Venezuelans here as well, hundreds of thousands of here, uh, that are here, and we have to recognize their circumstances. It would be unfathomable for me and totally un, 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 unreasonable to send those Venezuelans back to a country that we know what, we're de what they're dealing with. So the way to get things like this done, hopefully, yeah. is bipartisan. We're going to be talking and negotiating with the administration, and that's why I lower the rhetoric, do it in a bipartisan way, and I think we... And by the way, there's a Senate bill uh, that's similar by Senator uh, Rubio and Senator Menendez, Menendez. also yeah. bipartisan. That's how you get things done. Right, and in about 15 seconds, you have the president's here. You have a good relationship with him. Can you tell us, has there been any indication that he would be open to granting TPS to Venezuelans? I don't want to, I can't speak for the, for the White House. I can't speak for the president. I, I, I will tell you that they recognize the special situation that Venezuela has. So I think if we're able to lower the rhetoric, negotiate in good faith, I think if there's, any, if there's ever been an opportunity to legislatively do something like TPS, it's on this situation. Congressman, great to have you here. Thanks so much. Thank Keep you. in touch. Good to see you all. <laughs>